for our next example, we are ready to rank molecules according to their acidity. This is exciting because when we're ranking molecules based on their acidity, this is another way of saying that we want to rank them based on their reactivity. Which one of these is the most reactive and which one of these is the least reactive? Now in the structures that I've provided here, you'll see that one of the hydrogens in each structure has been colored pink because that hydrogen is the acidic hydrogen or the acidic proton. What does that mean? The hydrogen that is pink is the acidic, remember we call it proton, the acidic proton. That means that it is the hydrogen that is the one being lost or donated in the acid-base reaction. So because of this, what we really need to do is think about what these molecules uh, do as acids. What does it look like when they actually react as an acid? So for all of these molecules, when they're reacting as acids, there's a variety of different substances that they could be reacting with. But you probably picked up from Gen Chem that a lot of times we use water to represent the base that is reacting with our acids. And so for our first molecule, if we do an acid-base reaction between the molecule, the alcohol, and water, H2O, here are the two products that we get where we are seeing a transfer of proton pink H, uh, H plus moving from the alcohol over to the water. So there's one of our reactions and let's do the same thing for the other two molecules. So what we're doing right now is visualizing what does it look like when these molecules react? What does the reaction itself look like? So again, we are losing the hydrogen, the acidic hydrogen or the acidic proton off of each molecule, transferring it over to the water. And again, this is all stuff that should feel similar to things that you were doing at the end of general chemistry, predicting the products of an acid-base reaction. So we have one more to draw, and always when these molecules lose their acidic proton, they leave behind some sort of anion. And when water is our base, we're also producing H3O+. Oh, I see. I have not. Uh, one of the things that you will get used to with time is that organic chemists a lot of times don't put all of the lone pairs on their structures because we understand that the lone pairs are there. Okay, so here are the three molecules or the three reactions that we're looking at. When we want to rank these or compare these based on their relative acidity, what we are looking for, really what the question is asking is which of these reactions produces the most stable products? Which reaction makes the most stable products? What we know about chemistry is that reactions are very favorable, meaning that they're very likely to proceed if they produce stable products. So what we wanna focus our attention on are the products of each of these reactions. And we wanna compare the stability of the products of each of these reactions. When we find which reaction produces or makes the most stable products, that will give us information about which of these reactions is most favorable or most likely to proceed. So in order for us to really be able to focus our attention here, what I'm gonna do is erase all of these guys right here. Every reaction produces H3O+, which means in that regard, it's kind of a tie. And what I'd like to do is to not have so much stuff to look at. Like I'd like to be able to just really focus on what matters. So let's just get rid of those guys right there, and that way we can just really focus on these three molecules right here. And again, our question is, which reaction makes the most stable product? So okay, 
That means we're just comparing the stability of these three guys. And to do that, we're going to use our trick, ARIO. So the first thing that we're going to look at is which atom has the negative formal charge? Oxygen, carbon, and oxygen. And we just talked about how oxygen, because it's more electronegative, is better at holding a negative formal charge. So these two are going to be number one and number two in terms of stability. With the carbon having the negative formal charge, that's the worst case scenario. So this product right here is the least stable product. Bef and we're not ready to draw conclusions about that what, what that means in terms of reactivity just quite yet. Right now we're just ranking stability. So now we're looking at uh, oxygen versus oxygen and ARIO is not going to help us in that regard, which means we have to move on to factor number two, which is resonance, yes or no. Looking at this structure right here, because we only have lone pairs of electrons all located on the oxygen atom, there's nowhere for them to go. This molecule has no resonance at all. What about this molecule down here? Remember, any resonance is good resonance. Like in the last example, um, on the last slide, we talked about how we can move electrons out of a double bond and make a lone pair onto an atom, it's not great, it's not gonna look good, but anything is better than nothing. And because this molecule has resonance, even if it's gross resonance, this is the most stable of all of the products. And the other one we'll leave unlabeled because it's somewhere in the middle. So how do we, how do we go from, um, from there? What does that tell us? How can we use this information? The most favorable reaction, the most acidic, is going to give us the most stable products. Actually, I'm going to write this a different way. The strongest acid gives us the most stable products. And the um, strongest acid is another way of saying the most reactive acid. So the strongest acid gives us the most stable products, which means that the most stable product came from the strongest acid. This guy right here is our strongest acid. Our least stable product came from the weakest or least reactive of all of the acids. And this is just somewhere in the middle.